All right, all right. Welcome everyone to another Beyond the Rhythm podcast. I'm your host Benito Luciano. I have my other host here, uh, Asia the writer, and uh, we're excited tonight to bring you another show uh, with a very talented individual. We have uh, Jessica Lois on tonight, and uh, we've been following her on social media, and uh, she has some really nice things coming up. So we're we're glad to have her tonight, and. Uh, we want to say thank you to start off. So thanks, Jessica, for being here. <laughs> thank you guys for having me. Yep. Yep. Great, great. I think we'll start off uh, like we usually do with uh, with our guest. I want to start off and ask, what, what, uh, where did your love for music start? Um, so I come from a musical family. Most of my dad's side of the family are musicians. And so when I was born, my parents just thought, oh, she'll probably like music. Just throw her in some music lessons. And I started taking piano really young when I was five. And it just kind of grew from there, to be honest. Um, both of my parents are big music lovers. So, you know, the radio was always on in the car playing music. And I'm definitely well versed in like old grown folks music, as they say, because I was always on. Um, but yeah, I, I started playing piano really young and I just, I loved it. Like I was the kid who would be like, okay, homework for this week is pages three through four. And I would come in the next week and be like, okay, cool. So I'm on page 16 and I have a question about this. Um, like I've done three through 16. <laughs> um, so yeah, I it just, it, it's always been so fun and a nice, uh, a nice little refuge from the rest of the world. That's great. That's great. Awesome. That's did awesome. you uh did you do any performing or anything like that when you were younger or was it oh, just oh yeah i had a good job recitals and i was in the chorus in high school and middle school actually just in high school um so yeah i was i definitely was performing a lot as a kid yeah that's that's yeah. very cool very cool so so jessica we read that you um attended berkeley college of music so tell us about i guess how you got into that and your time there yeah, um, I mean, I got in the pretty normal way I applied. Um, <laughs> so nothing really fancy about how I got in, but it was, I mean, the main thing that comes to mind is that it was cold. Um, people always, when I say I went to Berkeley, people always think I mean Berkeley, California, but no, Berkeley, Boston, Massachusetts. And so it was chilly, very, very cold winters. Um, but other than that, it was a great place to learn and experiment with who you are as a person, like most colleges, but also who you are as a creative. Um, one of the things that was surprising a little bit to me, but not too much, but I think it's surprising to a lot of people is, you know, people would hear, oh, you, know, you must not have, you know, worked that hard or you must not have like had a lot of classes or really rigorous study. And it's like, no, we were working really hard. Like we had to take math and English and the rest of it, just like everybody else. But then also your final projects were like, write a song, produce a song, engineer a song, stuff like that. And so. It was a great training ground to learn the technical skills, as well as it gave me access to an amazing network of musicians from all over the world. Yeah, that's that's awesome. amazing. I didn't I didn't know that you all had kind of those core classes like that. And yeah, that's cool. um, it's not a conservatory. So like to be a college, you have to take, you know, to be called a college specifically, like they make you take all the other regular kind of classes. Yeah. But one I, thing that was fun about that is that some of the classes like for science, I took a two six, you know what I mean? So gotcha. they try and make it, they try yeah. and make it. <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. I mean, I know some of us are familiar with some of the Berkeley Online stuff that's, that's mm -hmm. come out recently and just seeing what they do, mm -hmm. uh, even on YouTube, sitting on some of the classes, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty amazing. Was it like that when you were there, like these big auditoriums with a lot of, you know, very talented um, people teaching? And I'm not as familiar with the Berkeley content they're putting out now, but that said, I don't think I ever had a class in an auditorium, but occasionally they would have speakers come in and then, you know, if you were free or you could make yourself free to go listen to the speaker talk in the auditorium. Um, I know a, a few years ago after I left, they merged with another local college in Boston. So I'm imagining the class sizes are bigger now. It used to be a little bit smaller when I was there, but yeah, it was very much like lecture style um for most of our classes but also very hands-on you know there would be a teacher who would have pro tools projected and it would be like you click this button you click this button you click this button to do these things but then also a lot of learning through listening you know to be i think i can't remember who said it i want to say it was miles da miles davis but i can't remember um but essentially to be a good musician you have to be a good listener you know and so some stuff it's hard to explain 
with words and it's easier to explain a concept if it's just, hey, let's listen to these three songs that, that do this one thing so that that becomes part of your musical lo- vocabulary. That's good advice, good advice. I, mean, I think I find myself doing that even as a producer now. It's like, yeah. okay, I need to I need to get better at drums or I need to figure out, you know, how to make better top lines or whatever. So that's, uh, that's important. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, uh, going back to the transition from you, you know, being young, learning the piano um, and going to, to college, how did you transition into finding your passion and what you're doing now as a, as a songwriter and producer? Yeah, I mean, I think when I was younger, I was definitely one of those overscheduled kids that was like basketball on Monday, basketball <laughs> on Tuesday, piano on Wednesday, dance on Thursday, like all those, you know, it was too much. Um, and that started when I was young and I had so many activities that I had the privilege to be exposed to. And then slowly but surely, like all of them kind of fell away one by one, but music always mm-hmm. stuck. And so when I was in high school and I was, you know, talking to my parents about colleges, I was just kind of like, why would I invest my whole life up until this point into one thing? And then when it comes time to be an adult and have a profession, just be like, okay, well, that was fun, but I don't need that anymore. Like, no, I love this shit. I'm um, sorry. I don't know. If that was mm-hmm. right. um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it just was, I, I didn't want to give it up just because I had to go into the next phase of my life after high school. And so when I first went to school, I originally thought that I wanted to be a music director for a tour, which I still think would be really fun to do. I think I would really love that if given the opportunity. Um, But, you know, pretty typical, stereotypical story. I went to college, got my first boyfriend, got my first heartbreak. And then I was like, well, now I need to write songs all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, And it kind of just started from there. And so I when I was at Berkeley, I double majored. One of my majors was songwriting and the other one was contemporary writing and production, which is kind of just a hodgepodge, you know, a little bit of writing, a little bit of production, a little bit of engineering kind of makes you well-rounded in that way. And so I really just fell in love with songwriting, to be honest. And the more experiences I have, the more I want to write about them and the more I want to share them. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Um, I think it's, I think it's great that you're able to really follow your passion Um, because some people, like you said, give that up because they don't even believe in it or, you know, they don't have the resources. So I think that's awesome. Um, So you talked about songwriting. Mm -hmm. You majored in that. Can you tell us about your process with songwriting and just how you do it? Um, So it's a little tricky because every song is a little bit different. I will say some songs um, you know, we, I'm sure you guys, but for people who don't know, are familiar with the term top lining, where you have the track already made, you have the music made, and then you get the music and you write the top line, which is the lyric and the melody that goes above it. And so in situations like that, where I already have a track that whether I made it or someone else made it, you really kind of just have to see what the music is making you feel and you know if it sounds like a ballad it would be kind of weird to write like a song where the lyrics are about being in the club or something (laughs) it could work maybe but a lot of times you just want to go with what the music is making you feel um and then with other times and this can happen with top lining as well i'm in sessions sometimes where i'll do this myself or my co-writers will want to do this where they'll go and we'll all record melodies and then we play each other our melodies and we say, oh, okay, I like your melody at like 15 seconds and your melody at like a minute and then your melody at like a minute and a half. And then we figure out, okay, this melody sounds like it would be great for a verse. This sounds great for a pre, this sounds great for a chorus. And then we kind of cobble the best parts of the melody together and then write to the melody with what feels best for the track. And then there are some times where, um, and I think this is actually my favorite uh, writing process is where the song is built out of a conversation. You know, you come into a writing mm-hmm. session with somebody, hi, how are you? What, what's been going on in your life lately? And they go, well, you know, I've been da 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 And they go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, <laughs> tell me more. Yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so this is the song. <laughs> like, yeah. this is, uh, you know, I, I love situations like that when they get to happen. They don't always get to happen that way, but when they do, they always just feel really special because they feel so personal. Um, and then, you know, all these scenarios I'm talking about are mostly co-writing, but then sometimes I write songs for myself and to be honest, the lyrics come first a lot when they, when I'm writing just by myself, um, someone will say something in a conversation or 
I'll be watching a TV show and I'll just think about a scenario and I'll write down some lyrics. And then usually what happens with me is that I like, I write lyrics down or I sing a melody into my phone. And usually when stuff shows up in my head, it's not the right time to write or not the time I feel like writing. And so then when I do want to have a writing day, I'm like, all right, let me go back and, and search through what I've been kind of collecting, my thoughts that I've been collecting for the past however long, and then use one of those as a jumping off point to make a full song. That was a very long answer, but it happened. No, no, I honestly love to hear the process because um, I feel like we have a lot of similarities, you know, mm -hmm. for me, I don't write every song the same as well. You know, there's yeah. always a different process, so. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like if you get stuck in one process, that's probably hard, you know what I mean? Because then if that one process doesn't work, it's kind of like, what do I do? As opposed exactly. to, I guess I'll just try a different strategy. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Um, let me see here. Let's see what else we have as far as questions. So, all right, yeah. So that, that was actually a good segue to what I wanted to ask next. So as you... Uh, I know you said sometimes you don't um, always write over your own music. So do you collab a lot um, or have you collabed a lot in the past? Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> like I collab on almost everything I do, um, especially in today's day and age where you don't have to do everything in order to have a great product. Like, you, you know, I'm really blessed to have really talented friends. Um, and we're really talented network. So if I know that there's someone who does a certain thing really well, why wouldn't I collaborate with them to get the best of what we both do and then blend it together to make something amazing? So yeah, I collaborate all the time. That's great. You have like a certain process or way you like to work with, with other people? Um, not necessarily. I think I just like to collaborate with people who are kind of open to wherever the song takes us. Um, I think it's it's less about having a collaboration style for me and more about having a personality style of people I like to collaborate with, which is basically yeah. people who leave ego at the door, you know, people who aren't like, it's gotta be my way, whatever. Um, and then sometimes, you know, when you collaborate, you do have scenarios where one person wants to go left and the other person wants to go right, and you it's hard to find a middle ground. And, yeah. you know, that's when you when you're working with people whose personalities are right and when you understand that the baseline for the session is respect and care for the person as well as for their skills then you end up figuring it out yeah yeah i think that's important like even as i even as i look at the industry more you know i realize that there's so many talented people out there but a lot of times the people who get the opportunities are the people who have the relationships um yeah. so and you know that's probably because people know them they can trust them they work well with them yeah definitely. um so yeah that's the way it goes absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. so well, i wanted to dig deeper into your process so i actually got to listen to your music um and it sounds really polished like i, I really i really liked it and um i kind of want to know like are you producing your own tracks that you sing on and kind of like your process from start to finish um, as far as like mixing, engineering, mastering. Yeah. So um, you'd probably have to ask me about a specific song for me to give <laughs> you the, the process of that one because they do all change um, so frequently. But I will say about the song that I most recently put out, You That One, mm -hmm. I, we had a, I wrote it with um, my friend Isaiah. And so Isaiah and I were writing to a track. And then as we were writing to that track, we were writing over Zoom. And, you know, I played the track. He was like, cool, let's write to this. I was like, great. And within the session, you know, I was at a keyboard. And so there would be times where I wouldn't hit play on the track, but I would just play the chords and play the lines and stuff on a keyboard. And we kind of started like messing with the tempo a little bit and like adding different chords in there. And it kind of became its own thing. And so we ended up, so I, I wrote the song with him, um, kind of half, half to a track, half to piano. Um, and then I was like, okay, well, I think we need a new track at this point <laughs> because we, we changed it so much. And so then I collaborated with a producer named Wes on the production. So he and I produced that together. And then we actually got uh, my friend Julia, who's a fantastic singer to sing it and singer and artist and writer actually. Um, so she's the, the voice on the track. And then I believe I did the vocal arrangement, but then Isaiah and I vocal produced her through the session when she sung the, um, 
when she sung it. And then after that, I, you know, cleaned up the vocal with Melodyne and, you know, comping and all that kind of stuff. And then sent it off to get mixed um, by Bree Payne. And she's a fantastic engineer and got mm -hmm. it nice and there it was. <laughs> so that's the process with one song, but they all kind of have their own, you know, twists and turns to how they come to being. It's kind of different. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Very interesting. Hey. Yep, yep. I wanted to ask you, uh, as a producer songwriter, I think probably even more than artist, you know, it's, it's important for us to find inspiration and be able to leverage that to, to write and do what we do. Where do you find your inspiration from? Um, This is really cliche, but life, you know, like <laughs> if you're dating someone, there's inspiration there. If you're not dating someone and how you feel about that, there's inspiration there. If you happen to have a friend, there's inspiration there. <laughs> you, you can really take inspiration from anywhere. I mean, going back to my time at Berkeley, they would even make us do exercises sometimes where they would come in and, you know, in class, they would be a bunch of newspapers and they would say, pick a newspaper, pick an article, and then write a song inspired by the article just to kind of work your muscles and be inspired. Um, but I think another thing too is that I think being a professional writer, you can't always wait for the inspiration to show up and be like, well, I didn't get inspired today. I guess I won't write, but like the deadline's tomorrow. Um, I think a lot of what being a good writer and a consistent writer and a professional writer is, is understanding that you don't wait for the muse. You know what I mean? Like, like I was saying before, like I have all my little voice notes and, and iPhone notes that I have things written down on so that when it's time to execute, I have a bunch of jumping off points. Um, now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I absolutely get inspired, you know, on my own or when I'm in the room with a co-writer, we, we get inspired together and it's like, oh my gosh, that would make such a great song. Let's write that. Um, but I think, I think inspiration is way less important than people think it is. Um, I think craft is more important than inspiration, I guess. No. I like that. That said, to be an artist, you have to be open for the muse to show up and for inspiration to hit you whenever, you know? Yeah, that's interesting because I, I asked Asia a similar question mm -hmm. and she also said that it was a lot about life experiences and I'm kind of the opposite. Like a lot of my music is not real life. It's almost, uh, well, it's Pretty usually fancy. made up, you know, it's just, yeah. I, I find it, I, I usually pull a lot of inspiration from whatever I'm listening to it at the moment mm -hmm. and that's can be vast. So I think that's why a lot of my music doesn't really stay the same mm -hmm. um but yeah that's kind of where i draw inspiration from so it's it's all kinds of different things and ways to to do that um yeah. that so makes that sense. Was and then when i say i draw inspiration from life that doesn't mean all my songs are 100 percent you know true to life right. um i think a lot of what happens is that i'll be inspired by a thing that happens at like a level two emotion and then for the song i need to take it to a level 10. You know, so even if it's something where I have a crush on somebody, you know, in the song, I'm gonna be in love. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And or if like I'm a little frustrated at something in the song, I'm probably gonna be mad as hell. Or sometimes you just want to write about the, the middle ground and the gray area of emotions. And that can be, mm -hmm. those can be great songs too. But I'm inspired by life, but you know, I'm not a journalist. It's not my job to give it to you exactly the way it was because most of the time your life is a little, it's a little boring. Nope. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, so I want to know, like, when things get challenging, you know, all artists, we get, like, stuck in a rut or, you know, what have you. What, like, how do you find the will to push through that and just keep going as an artist? I mean, one thing that I've found and one thing I've been really focused on this year is sustainability. Um, I got burnt out earlier in 2022, and that did not feel good. Mm -hmm especially after we're really trying to accomplish a lot of things to be burnt out in that moment which is like this freaking sucks um but i think one thing that i'm trying to incorporate more into my life but also more in my creative life is rest and breaks you know you cannot all of us have a very finite amount of energy you cannot have output after output after output after output and not pause to kind of put into yourself and fill your own cup as they say and so I think something that's really important to me so that I don't end up feeling that way is just 
take breaks. You know what I mean? Go outside, touch some grass. Like, <laughs> I just think it's really important her creatives on the come up, especially who aren't dealing with the kind of budgets that celebrities are dealing with and who aren't dealing with, you know, when you're Beyonce, I could, um, if Beyonce called me today and was like, you need to meet me in an hour and be like, y'all, this was so great. Thank you so much. I have got to go meet Beyonce. But like, <laughs> No, I'm not even saying that. I wouldn't be disrespectful like that. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like people <laughs> jumping at the opportunity to go do something with you. Mm -hmm. um, that was terrible. I wouldn't actually leave y'all for me. <laughs> um, you you I better. <laughs> you would do this later. <laughs> um, yeah, you want to pick up the phone with me in the middle of an interview. But um, point being, I think it's really easy for people on the way up to get burnt out because so much of the work is, I just got to work to get there. You know what I mean? But you don't want to get there. And then by the time you get there, you're like spent and tired and cranky and grumpy because you worked yourself to the bone and damn near killed yourself to get to a certain place. I want to get to my goals with my body, mind and soul intact. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want to get to where I, I want to get to without like bruises and feeling like I beat myself up to get there. So yeah. I think honestly, that's kind of what helps me keep going. And that's something I've had to learn is that the more you give yourself what you need, physically, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, the more you give yourself what you need, the less you feel like it's hard to keep going. Um, and obviously we all have that sometimes, but I think really when you are encountering resistance within yourself to do the thing you need to do, it sometimes is a sign that you need to go do something else for a little bit. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really uh that's really good I, i'm actually finding myself in the in the same place as well mm -hmm. i think uh like the first half of this year i probably written produced mixed mastered even sang on over 50 songs mm -hmm. so you know it definitely got taxing but i think uh mm -hmm. like you said like finding that balance is important but i think even even more it's important for your success because when you can find a way to be consistent and be happy and have the energy and the will to do what you need to do um i feel like that's how you how you get where you want to go um not these kind of spurts where you're just doing it in your burnout doing your burnout like no one can really kind of grab a hold of what you're doing and you can't consistently deliver that way so uh, yeah i think that's important yeah one thousand percent definitely so I, I think it's a good segue into uh, my next question. Do you have any hobbies outside of the music that you do? I wish. And people ask me this all the time. And I'm just like, <laughs> I wish I had an answer for you. I wish I could be like, I knit. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> um, yeah, that's the tricky part. And it's a good segue because that's the tricky part about when your hobby is the thing that you love and the thing that yeah. to make you the most money. Um, it can get hard to separate when am I relaxing doing music and when am I working doing music? Yeah. Um, but I think I'm pretty regular in that, you know, we all have our TV shows, especially in the era of like streaming and, you know, they say we're in a golden age of TV again. Um, and so I, you know, I have my shows, I have my, I, I've become to love online comics. So I've never been into like actual comic books. I think they're really cool. I just never happen to really get into them, but there's a lot of online comics now that I really love. Um, so reading through those, um, I've been getting really into astrology. So like reading more about my chart or reading more about just general things in astrology. I'm very, see, I'm very like, I'm very like an edutainment type of girl. Like I'll, I'm good for a nature documentary. <laughs> <laughs> so just things like that. Very just like, you know, kind of the regular stuff. And then of course, hanging out with friends and loved ones and animals, you know, things that really just let you just relax. Yeah, definitely. It's, I, I, I think it's important to, you know, have that balance. So Absolutely. that's good. Absolutely. Oh, and going to the beach. Now that I live in California, definitely on the beach. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Um, Kind of going back to the music side, mm -hmm. uh, we talked a little bit about this while we were talking about collaboration, but I think some people would be interested to, to know a little bit more about the networking side of producing and songwriting. Um, who would you say are the important pieces or players that you need around you to be successful in what you do? Ooh, uh, people who support you. Um, 
you know, and that's, I don't know if you're asking the question specifically about what kind of music people you need around you, but I feel like the people you need around you are the people who bring you up more than they bring you down, the people who you feel like you can trust and that you can trust with your good days and you can trust with your bad days. Um, people who make you feel good, people who make you feel encouraged, people who make you, people who inspire you. I mean, at least for me, like the people I need around me are the people who inspire me to be a better human being and the people who inspire me to be a better musician and the people who inspire me to keep going when I'm feeling tired. Um, so that's who I need around me. And then as far as uh, just period, whether they're like music people or, you know, non-music people. Um, and as far as music people that I need around me, it's really good to have a bunch of people in your network who are just kind of jacks of all trades and can you can call them for a lot of different things. But then there's also people you need in your network who are like, they do this one thing and woo, do they do it well. Like they knock it out the park every time with this one specific skill. So I think you need a blend of both in your network. That's a great answer. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So Jessica, can you tell us um, what kind of projects you're working on right now? What we can expect? Yeah, I'm working on an album and I want it to come out in October, but it might be November, I'm not sure. Um, and so I'm working on an album of songs that are kind of similar to the last three singles that I've dropped, where I'm doing the writing and production and vocal production, but then it's all different singers. And so it's been really, really exciting to collaborate with all different kinds of people on this album. Um, I haven't told anyone the title yet, but it is definitely about love. Um, I feel like love is, you know, the most powerful force in the universe. And so why not write about it and, you know, milk it for all, all it's worth. <laughs> and um yeah awesome. i mean I'm, I'm a big romantic so I, i'm a lover of love so i'm really excited about it awesome well i'm i'm excited to to hear it and if it's anything like your last couple of projects i know it's gonna be great so yep. thank you so much thank you yeah mm -hmm. so kind of to, to piggyback on that i guess uh sometime our uh guests have longer plans or aspirations like where do you i don't know if you have plans for the next 10 years or you have a, a bigger vision but can you tell us a little bit about about that yeah i mean i've been trying to speak beyonce into existence and <laughs> I'm just waiting on my parkwood phone call <laughs> beyonce i'm just i'm here i'm here um but yeah i would love to work with uh my my musical heroes and my faves like beyonce and so many others um, one thing I've wanted to do for a really long time is uh, direct a musical, or not direct like the actors and everything, but be the music director and write all the music for a musical, um, like a Broadway musical. Um, but I also think I would really love to, this is like a, a big dream I've had for a really long time, is to be the music person for a Disney princess movie. Um, I kind of want to be the Lin-Manuel to another Moana. Um, or even the Lin-Manuel to another Encanto, I guess. Um, I've loved Disney music since I was a kid and I just feel like those songs are so powerful and they have such a impact on young people. And they, you know, they travel the world, all, you know, everybody knows a Disney song for the most part. Um, even if you're in a country that English isn't your native language, so many people know those songs. And so that's really a big dream of mine to work for Disney in some capacity, but then especially to be the main music person behind a Disney princess movie. And then fingers crossed it's a black hole. It's a black yep. hole. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. That's cool. Uh, let's see here. And Where also more than that, sorry, not to, not to no, rant, go ahead. but honestly, my goal is to be happy and to stay happy. Like, I feel like I'm in a really good place in my life right now. And I'm, I'm really happy that I'm here. But I think beyond just professional goals, like I want to be sound of mind <laughs> for the rest of my life, you know, and like, yeah full-hearted and I, I, I want to be well you know I think so much of us we focus so much of our lives on achieving professional goals and sometimes wellness goes to the back burner and I think I'm kind of in a place now where yes I want to achieve my professional goals but I think just as important to me now is I want to be well physically financially emotionally you know musically I just I want to be well yeah, and yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. Like nowadays, I'm all about just finding my peace. And like you said, being happy is yeah. very important. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. Yeah. That's a, you know, it's a big part of success. I think too many artists in the industry, they don't realize that producers too. And then they, they have the success, but they never find out how to be happy. And then right. when it all ends, it's mm-hmm. like, they're miserable so yeah that's a great answer well, even if it doesn't end and like they continue to be have success on top of success yep. on top of success but it's like why am i miserable with like 10 grammys and a hundred thousand dollars or more in my bank account like that doesn't make any sense yep. and it's because you never really focused on the inside work um right. as you were doing so well with the outside stuff and i just think we have to start talking more about how you have to have both um, in order to achieve what you want to achieve, because who wants to be sad in a mansion? That's exactly. Terrible. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. It's a great answer. Uh, I think the next question we usually have Asia uh, ask because she's she's come up with this cu- question and it's so great. Okay. Um, go ahead and kick it off with <laughs> Asia. <laughs> Hit me. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, before we have you share your contact information. Um, so this is something we like to ask every guest. Mm-hmm. And it's a little fun question. So if you could step into the shoes of um, any creator out there, um, kind of live the lives of what they do every day, mm-hmm. who would that be and why? So is this like a Freaky Friday body swap thing? Or is this just <laughs> like, sit, like sit by them and like observe them for a day? Either one. Yeah. Um, well, (laughs) I mean, obviously Beyonce is coming to mind. Um, if it was like, you know, I get the real, real and not like the fake, fake of her, you know what I'm saying? Like if you trust me enough with her life, I would love to just, I really honestly wish I could have watched her create Renaissance, to be honest with you, because that, that album is so... I heard someone on a podcast say the album should have a bibliography. Like there's so many references <laughs> and it's so complex and yet so joyful. Um, I would have loved to just be a fly on the wall of like every single step of the process. Cause even you can tell even in the songs, so many of the songs are kind of like two songs in one or like three songs in one. Mm-hmm. I would love to just see how that process comes together of, of the collaboration there. Um, so yeah, she definitely comes to mind. But as far as like switch bodies for a day, <laughs> this is gonna say <laughs> I have a very silly answer, but it's true. Um, probably like Lisa Bonet, but like five years ago when she was still married to Jason Momoa. <laughs> Leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's my answer. <laughs> I dig it. Okay. <laughs> got you. Got you. <laughs> just to, uh, just really quick to kind of mm-hmm. piggyback on what you were saying about, you know, Beyonce's Renaissance album and mm-hmm. that process. Like, I found myself there in one of our uh, recent battles this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I created these songs where I don't think anybody got what I was doing mm-hmm. to the degree that it was, but there were all these references and, I mean, I was pulling, I was pulling uh, lines from Kobe and Kanye and you know Biggie and 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 uh, he did he uh, vocals and there was just so much in that uh, in those five songs that I created and a lot of that stuff there was definitely more emotion behind uh, that particular group of records I was I was making but you know it's also like the cre- the collaboration piece because I, I had people who were who were there like helping me even if it was just saying like no you know that's that's mm-hmm. not good or try this or think about this or what about when somebody said this in the group like two months ago like pull something in from this and then I, I would imagine that record probably was the same way it's just like all these amazing people yeah. coming together and they they have all these references to something that's gonna be great and it just comes together and it's just amazing. And you're not going to get it if you don't actually sit down with all of them and, and yeah. figure out what was in their head at the time. So understand that. Yeah, I feel like I, I want a documentary, which I know we'll never get one, but like, I would just love a documentary, like documenting the whole process of that. Cause even in the few little behind the music stuff she let us see with self-titled, she talked about how she rented a house in the Hamptons and had a bunch of writers, just writers and producers just come show up for like a week or two and you know they were threading songs together and being like oh i would go in this room and they'd be working on that but i take the chorus from that and the verse from this other thing over here and yeah it's a, it's a great project and i totally get what you mean 
Um, and that's actually very similar to how I work because I collaborate so often on production and have different people sing my songs and on writing. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's music is a really cool process in 2022. I'll say that. Definitely. Definitely. So I guess, uh, yeah, I think we've, we've reached the end. We definitely want to give you the opportunity uh, to share anything with off audience that you want to, and also, uh, give your contact information, how people can find you online and your music. Yeah, so I'm reachable at Jessica Lois Music on Instagram and TikTok. Um, but like, if you're trying to talk to me, hit me on Instagram. Um, so Jessica and then L-L-O-Y-C-E Music. Um, I also have a website, which is jessicalois.com, where you can find out more about me. There's a services um, list on there. So if there's anything that I've said that I do that you're interested in getting my help on, you can definitely message me through the website, whether it's you need me to write a song for you. You want me to look at a song you already wrote and see if we can make it better. Do you need vocal production? Do you need piano lessons? Do you need, um, really, there's a whole bunch of stuff on there that I'm open to helping people with. Um, but yeah, that's how to contact me. And I guess the only thing I'd love for people to know and do is stream my music, man. Like if you want to see more black girls in pop music and see what, you know, we can do, definitely stream my music, Jessica Lois, Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, the whole nine. Excellent. Great. That's awesome. Well, Jessica, I know I will be hitting you up because I'm interested in collaborating, especially after okay. talking to you today and listening yeah. to your music. I'm definitely a fan. So we were very excited to have you today. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it, especially you guys being patient and flexible with me. I know it's been a, a minute to schedule this, but this has been really nice. I really appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Jessica, once again, we want to say thank you, give you a round of applause for uh, mm -hmm. showing us, uh, you know, your your talent and letting us get a little little peek into your life and, and what you do and your talent. So once again, thank you. And I think we're going to end the podcast for tonight. So thanks, everyone, for joining another uh, Beyond the Rhythm podcast. And uh, we hope to see you next time. Peace. <laughs>